Hello, in this Fargo tutorial, we show you how to commission a BugNet device under Cordesis 3.5. To use BugNet on a Vago controller with firmware 23 or higher, we first need a Cordesis 3.5 version that is released for the controller firmware. In our case, it's a PFC200 with a pre-installed BugNet license and firmware 25. This is released for Cordesis version Service Pack 18 Patch 5. To be able to use Vago devices and Vago libraries in Codesys, we also need the Codesys device description. Since the use of BACnet beyond the 13 days evaluation period requires a license, we need the Vago licensing add-on for license management and Codesys. In addition, the Vago solution builder add-on is required as an interface to the Vago BACnet configurator which we need as an additional program to configure BugNet modules and to create BugNet objects. These software components, along with manuals and application notes, are available from the Vago Download Center, downloadcenter.vago.com. A link is provided in the video description. A link to the tutorial Download Center and Codesys installation including add-ons is also included in the video description. The BugNet configurator manual linked in the video description also lists Vago devices that are BugNet enabled and whether a BugNet license is already pre-installed. When all components are ready for use, the first thing to do is usually to activate BugNet on the controller. This is done in the web-based management. We log into the web browser using the IP address and find the BugNet menu in the field bus tab and enable BugNet service under configuration. This is already enabled here as we are using a BugNet controller. We now start in Codesys 3.5 and have already created a new standard project with a PFC200 connected. Communication to the controller is established and the modules on the KBus are attached. Now we add the Vagos' BugNet library in the library manager. By right-clicking on device, we give the controller a unique name under properties. This will then be used by the BugNet configurator as the BugNet device name. Of course, the naming should be the same here. By double-clicking on one of the modules, we have the possibility to give the channels names. It's important that the names are IEC 61161 compliant. These names are used by the BugNet configurator as object names for the native BugNet objects. So the objects that are automatically generated and have a direct reference to an input or an output. If the name starts with an underscore, it will be adapted in the configurator as an object name without the underscore. If no underscore is used, the configurator inserts the slot and the channel numbering as a prefix, followed by the assigned name. Due the previous installation of the Solution Builder add-on, the Vago menu has been added to the top menu bar. Click on the Vago Solution Builder Open in Vago BugNet Configurator button to open the BugNet Configurator. First, the BugNet Manager is created in the Applications folder and then, if it does not already exist, a BugNet Configurator project folder is created with the same name as the Codesys project. The controller name, order number, firmware and BugNet version have already been imported from Codesys. Each time the controller is rebooted, the corresponding controller is displayed. However, this only works if the name of the controller in Codesys equals the name of the configurator. Now we have to assign a device ID that is unique on the network. Now you can select the desired modules using the usual options. At this point, we also find the names previously assigned in the controller configuration as designations for the new BugNet objects to be created. First, the group with underscore, then without prefix, the group without underscore, with prefix, and then the IOs that we have not assigned a name to, with a name created by the configurator. However, we will select everything with Control A. With a right click on the selected items in this version still called set a runtime type, we create function blocks with the objects in one of the three types small, medium, or large. They differ in the scope of the BugNet properties they contain. The BugNet Configurator Manual describes which properties are included in which form. Now we have configured all native, so the hardware-bound BugNet objects. Confirm with OK. 
and the list of created botnet objects is now displayed in the main window of the botnet configurator. Now we want to create an additional non-native value that is not directly linked to an input or an output. To do this, we right-click in the structure view on the left and select Add Objects. In this window, we now select the object type Analog Value, give it a name and select Medium. If you are not sure which property you need, you can see how the checkboxes in front of the properties change as you select the different properties in the right-hand window. We will stay with Medium and confirm these settings with Add and Close. The list now shows the analog value as a bucknet object. To be able to use all the objects in Codices, we have to synchronize them with a button that is still called Sync to eCockpit in this version. With Store and Download, we store the configuration in the Bugnet Configurator project file and in the bug stack of the controller. This completes the configuration in the Bugnet Configurator. Back in Codices, we see that a Bugnet folder has been created containing the previously selected data points as GVLs. If the inserted GVLs are underlined in red here, the library is missing Vago this Bugnet. The program contained in the Bugnet folder Botnet HW mapping links the variables of the KBAS view with the created botnet objects. So it must be called either in the PLC PRG or in the task configuration. In the KBAS view, we can see that variables with a name from the botnet configurator have now also been entered here for the channels that we have previously left free. Now we check the configuration with a simple I.O. check. To do this, we log in to the controller, start it up and switch to the button configurator. Here we set our first digital output to true. And the output is active both in codices and on the hardware side of the output module. The non-native additional created analog value can also be found in the botnet objects folder in the GVL botnet analog value objects. We can use this in the PLC PRG by assigning and declaring a variable to it. To do this, we insert the analog value with F2 from the path application folder botnet GVL botnet analog value objects, for example with the property R present value. We then assign this value to a variable and declare it. Via this variable R analog value, the property present value of the botnet object is now read cyclically.